Welcome once again. President Muhammadu Buhari has stated that he would like, uh, or rather he would consider granting a state pardon to Ken Sarawiwa and eight other Ogoni leaders executed by the Sani Abacha led military administration on the 10th of November in 1995. After being accused of murdering four Ogoni chiefs at a pro-government meeting, Saruwa and the others were sentenced to death by hanging by a special military tribunal. However, several Nigerians believed Saruwa and the others were framed for the murder because of their very impactful but non-violent campaign against oil extraction and the continuous degradation of the Ogoni land by the government-backed uh, multinational oil companies, especially Royal Dutch Shell. Joining us to discuss this is Celestine Nakpobari, the National Coordinator, Ogoni Solidarity Forum, Nigeria. Good evening. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Nakpobari. Thank you for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. Great to see you. Um, so I, wa I want you to, first of all, share your thoughts on the, you know, the discussion about a state pardon. I've seen a response you know, by um, uh, the Ken Sarua Foundation that I'll share you know, right after your um, response. Now. But let's hear from you first. W what are your thoughts? Do you think this is... You know, you know, perfect timing, you know, better late than never, or very unimportant? Well, incidentally, I was at the presidential villa on Friday. I was among the Ogoni leadership that met with the president. I was there when he made the statement. But um, the Ogoni people and the civil society groups in Nigeria are not pleased with the word pardon. Because you grant pardon to one who committed an offense. We all know that Ken Sarawa did not commit that offense. And, and the Ogoni people and the civil society would have wished that, um, that Mr. President apologized to the Ogoni people on behalf of the Nigerian government uh, and exonerate Ken Sarawa and those that died with him because they did not commit that, that crime. We are not happy with the word pardon. And, 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 and if you go through Ogoni, from that Friday to today, everybody has been almost mad on the street, you know, um, rejecting the word pardon. We know how they are can is to our heart. In fact, the entire Niger Delta, you, you would have seen a statement from the John National Congress, INC. They released a statement before the Cancer World Foundation. So, um, when the government, when, when Nigerian government returned to civil rule in 1999, there were two issues plaguing Nigeria, the June 12 and the Goni issue. June 12 had been tactically settled. Government apologized to the Abdullah family and even gave him so many awards and honors. We want him to Goni because we did not commit any offense. Okay. Um, in, nicely put. And you spoke about the response from the Ken Sarua Foundation. I hope we can put that on screen uh, to show exactly what uh, they are saying. They say exoneration, not pardon for Ken Sarawiwa. Um, yes, there you have it. It says uh, the Board of Directors for the Ken Sarawa Foundation uh, has received and read the statement from Mr. Adishino. It says, I'm just going to skip a few paragraphs to say Ken Sarawa and the other eight Ogoni were not criminals. They were innocent activists unjustly murdered for fighting for a just cause on behalf of the oppressed community. The path to true peace in the region begins with justice. The cleaning up of the environment which they campaigned and died for uh, is a, first a good step. I'll, I'll stop there. Of course, uh, uh, there you have it on your screen. But Mr. Apobari, I, let's go further now. Before we get, uh, we might come back to the exoneration or pardon discussion. Um, but what would you say, and if, if you were to speak on behalf of the Ogoni people, which would you say is more important? An exoneration, a pardon, or that the government actually does the things that led to the agitation of the Ogoni people in the first place, cleaning up of Ogoni land, cleaning up their farms, you know, and, and giving them, of course, better benefits for the, the natural resource that has been, you know, sourced from their land for decades. Um, which would you say is more important? Well, in this case, um, Ogoni people were successful fishermen and farmers. We never ask the government and the oil companies to come and pollute our land. They owe us a lot. They destroy our means of livelihood and destroy everything. We shouldn't beg them to come and clear up their mess. They are the people owing us. And so um, it's neither right here nor there. You know, they, they did everything. They are, they are the goat. They are the knife. They polluted the land. They destroyed our livelihood. They devastated the environment. They key our leadership. So. All the blames are on the head of the government. 
So whatever way they want to go about settling and clearing up their own mess, it's their own business. We are the victim here. So, so, so why I'm asking this is because, you know, like you mentioned, the June 12th, you know, and of course the conferment of the GCFR to uh, MK Abiola in 2018, um, that was somehow, and some people interpreted that as somehow some way to appease you know, the, uh, you know, Southwest. Same way, you know, so they've also said that making uh, former President Olusegun Obasanjo, um, you know, president in 1999, was to appease the Southwest, as it is described in some quarters. Um, but you said, you know, the government has the yam and the knife. But would you, would you say that the cause that the Ken Sarwewa and the other eight Ogoni leaders were fighting for, you know, that should be what the government should be focusing on instead of simply say, talking about a pardon, shouldn't you know that be what the um, Ken Sarawa Foundation and yourself, the Ogoni Solidarity Forum, be telling the Nigerian government? Well, as part of the process of healing our wounds, the issue of exoneration is very important. Even if it was not among the demands, but I think it is, it is a far way outweighs you know the other demands in the Ogoni Bill of Rights, as far as I'm concerned. Because uh, you cannot compare anything to life, not a life such as that of cancer. We were. Over 2,000 persons were murdered in cold blood in Ogoni. You are only talking about the Ogoni now that were hung. Over 2,000 people were innocently murdered by Paul Kuntumo and their group. And they are alive today. Paul Kuntumo is dead, but Komo, the other Musa Komo that was the then government, the military minister, is there, and many of them that collaborated to key or good people. They are there. So I think they should do all the issue of political marginalization. Up to now, no going to have been governor, no going to have been deputy governor, no going to have been speaker, no going to have been chief judge. In spite of the fact that Ogoni is a majority in River State, even if we are minority in Nigeria. These are some of the issues that Ken was talking about, including um, cleaning up of the environment and cultural issues that you don't send Ogoni people to the university to go and study outside Yoruba or Igbo when we have our distinct culture and language. You know, so these are some of the things that we'll be talking about. Well, um, would, you, would you also, you know, say that, um, you know, these conversations and, you know, the thoughts of a pardon and or exoneration is really only just opening up wounds that we're, you know, trying to heal um, um, over time? And do you expect that the Ogoni people would once again you know, bring back these conversations and make these demands uh, louder? Of course, it's a continuous struggle. We are on a journey. We are on a journey. And that's why um, we are asking that first and foremost, you exonerate this, this man, this innocent man. In fact, um, a memorial at work that was brought in from the UK in 2015, the name of Ken, was seized by the custom. See, today, it's seized with the custom because the current head of custom, the current custom boss, was the only military officer, Mohammed Ali, Ali Amid Ali, was the only military officer on that tribunal that sentenced Ken Sarwa to death. So he didn't want to see anything about Ken. The bitterness of Nigeria against the Goni is still very high. And the only way you can begin to address these issues is to, you know, gradually move one after the other. And November 10th is not far from today. We are expecting that the government will exonerate Ken and the Ogoni and ap apologize to the Ogoni people, and we take it up from there. And, and, and what happens if none of that takes place? If none of that takes place, um, you would have heard that Mr. President said that he has given license to MPDC or NMPC. I can assure you that one bed will not fly into Ogoni in the name of oil if those things are not taken care of. No, so, 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 so can you repeat that? What, what do you mean by that? Um, I, I, I read the I statement mean, from the president. Because you cannot, if you like me, you will like my dog. You cannot like my oil and hate me. You, you said that you have given license for people to go and explore oil in Ogoni, but you don't want to exonerate. You don't want to talk about the issues that paint us. I mean, so, I mean, you can't like me. If you like me, you like my dog. No bed will fly into Ogoni land until they begin to address these issues. That concern us. We are Nigerians too. Um, do you also have the same um, feelings towards the uh, state uh, governments, uh, you know, in uh, the Niger Delta? 
Of course. And, and, and the reason I'm asking that is, you know, yes, I understand the Nigerian government's failures here and there. Um, but uh, you, I think you might also, you know, you know, notice that there's still some level of failure on the state level, on the local government level. I agree. Um, and the I agree NDDC. With you. I agree completely with you that the states have cheated the and the the good people. They're not that about that, but it wasn't River State that kicked and so on. It was Sani Abacha, the federal government, for which what they represent today. Government is a continuum. You take the liability and also take the assets. So, um, Buhari apologized to the Abiola family for a crime he did not commit. He should also apologize to the Ogoli people for also a crime he did not commit. Do you think that the Niger Delta representatives, uh, PANDEF, you know, do you think that, you know, the Ogoni representatives also are doing enough, you know, lobbying to ensure that these things happen? Uh, because someone might argue was, that, that the Southwest, you know, has, you know, it, it's, it's lobbyists, um, you know, in check. And, and they've done well enough to, to ensure that uh, the Abiola family got what it, you know, eventually got for June 12. Um, so do you think that the Ogonis have proper representatives to speak on their behalves? Well, this afternoon, I addressed Pandev. Pandev at the General Assembly today. And I addressed Pandev. And I presented this matter. And I hope it will be part of the final statement that will come out. I also want to inform you that Ken Sarawa's son, the late Ken Jr., yes. accepted an appointment to work with Obasanjo and Jonathan as senior special assistant just to achieve this same aim. So what is more lobby than accepting an appointment as the son of Ken and ensuring that the government that he worked for acknowledges his father? He was so disappointed, and it may have been part of the thing that led to his early death. So I think the earlier government begin to address this issue, the better for everybody. Okay, can, can you share more, share more light on what the uh, family of Ken Saruwa, you know, currently is like? You know, um, where are they? Are they still in the Niger Delta? Um, do these things still, of course, hurt them when, when we have these discussions? Well, Ken was not a local champion. Ken was an international personality, and so also at the family. One of the younger brothers was the director of military intelligence that, uh, during the Jonathan administration. That was uh, General Letham. We, we have Dr. Owen that signed this based in Canada and sometime here. So the Ken family, the children live abroad, all of them, even when he was alive, you know. So um, he had not been a local champion. He only came home to help his people. And if coming home to help your people have become a crime, then I don't know how that has become a crime. Uh, yes, yes, the family are in pains. We are also all in pains. But this was a jolly good fellow that committed no offense. That to ask that these own people get a better deal and get a chunk of what they produce to service Nigeria. Look at what oil money has done in Abuja within so short a time. Abuja that does not have one oil well. Abuja that does not suffer one negative consequence of our production. 99% of the oil well in Niger Delta today belongs to people who have never visited Niger Delta before, who don't know the pains we go through. And they will stay there and say, kill him. If you don't kill him, they will pursue us from the Niger Delta. Let teach other people a bitter lesson on how not to stop us. I mean, that kind of a thing. On November 10, 1995, the Nigerian government chose between oil and blood. And I mean, you cannot equate oil with blood. And that's what they did. And that's why they have to apologize and exonerate those who were innocently murdered because of oil. Oh. Um, like you've said, you know, and according to you, if uh, this isn't done, no bird would fly across uh, Ogoni land uh, from the 10th uh, of uh, November. Um, I, I also got to, um, you know, and of course, reading back at some of the things uh, concerning this discussion today, I, I watched some of the testimony from the Oputa panel um, and got to, of course, learn more about the 10th, the 9th, actually, of November when the execution notice was served and um, the 10th morning of, uh, of November 1995. Really, really sad story. Um, Celestin Akobari, I enjoy speaking with you. Looking forward to talking with you again, maybe on the 10th or after the 10th of November. Uh, have a great evening and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break and when we come back, uh, of course, uh, uh, we'll uh, get to listen to Nigeria's reaction to the article written by The Economist. And when we return then, I'll be giving my take. 
this is Nigeria, anything can happen. Um, a country where um, most of um, our, our ministry officers, police and all of them are you know, you know, not doing much as expected from them. So anything can happen. It's a painful one. It's a shameful thing, really, that this is happening around us. My ministry officers, Rajin Okada, ministry officers in Lagos, most of them are, you know, doing um, bus driver, Rajin, you know, it's a shame. But that's what we found ourselves. It's possible. Most of the attacks we, we've been observing, in particular most of the one that happens in the northern state, we notice there is a kind of insider, a kind of a betrayer insider in some of the attacks, like the one that happens in the military school. I think NDA or thereabouts. Yeah. So some of them, by the way it happened, you know that definitely there must be some element of betrayal. Some of the militaries are also <coughs> a kind of those that are helping to uh, to support these terrorists or maybe give them information, either which way. It, 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 it may not really be supplying the weapon. So people are talking based on what is going on in the country. But for me to believe that Nigeria are selling weapons, Nigerian armies are selling weapons, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I, I feel that matter is a dedicated matter. When Nigeria as of today, and with the types of leaders that we have, and with what is going on, even the security challenges in the country, there is nothing that is not possible. Politics and just before we go, my take. It came as a huge shock. It felt like a sting at the soul of every Nigerian, the news of the ex execution of the Ogoni Nine. From testimonies, uh, of course, from the Oputa panel and beyond, the execution order was sent at 10 p.m. on the 9th of November, 1995. Between 12 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. on the 10th of November, the Ogoni Nine were killed. The world was shocked, but it close to nothing. And all of this was for championing the call for a better life for the Ogoni people. 26 years later, their waters are still polluted and their farms still damaged. In 2018, President Muhammadu Buhari conferred the GCFR title on late MKO Abiola. There have also been calls for a memorial and honor for those who lost their lives during the NSAS protests just last year. But the key issues here are, just like the reason behind the NSAS protests still being evident one year later, the Uguni people still have similar complaints 26 years after. The Nigerian government needs to do better with actually answering the pleas of its people instead of state pardons and titles being conferred. And that's my take. Thank you for joining us on PLOS Politics. Uh, of course, they return at the same time tomorrow. See you then. And remember, this is PLOS TV Africa. Big stories live here.